Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Mommy's Reading. I'm Randa and I'm reading We are about two weeks into 2021, so Happy New Year. I'm late saying it. Um, if you saw my last video, you will, you know that it was, uh, it was because we have the flu going around in our family. I am happy to report we are now three days flu-free. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a long time, but when you are, you know, the main caregiver cleaning up all the vomit, then three days is great. <laughs> this seems like the most wonderful gift. <laughs> so three days, flu three, flu, flu free. Uh, let's get into it. So real quick, what I should have posted before the flu one, I'm sure, would have been uh, my favorite books of 2020. And really, this will be an easy one because there was one really that stood above all the others. It was the absolute best book. Uh, and it was called A Bad Day for Sunshine by Dorinda Jones. Now, if you have not read any of Dorinda Jones books, you have got to. <laughs> I mean, they are phenomenal. Uh, I don't think I've read anything of hers that I have not enjoyed. They are, they're, they, they have a lot of steam, they have a lot of snark, and some paranormal elements, but they are not like, I don't know if I'd call them all, uh, like the, the, the Bad Day for Sunshine, I don't think I would call it paranormal, but um, the other books that she is known for have um, paranormal elements. Um, she has a series that was started for the, uh, the women's women's fiction, what, what are they called? The ones that are written by authors, they're for, the, where the heroine is over the age of 40. And they're fabulous. I love these books. Uh, but she has some in there, and uh, she has one of those coming out. A series of hers that got me hooked on her books, the first that I started with was the Charlie Davidson series, and it is just so good. It is phenomenal. It is, I don't know the right word for it, that's not good or phenomenal <laughs> but I I came across it by accident I think it was um, it was a book that I bought like at a Rite Aid um, on a trip that we were on I just wanted something to read in the hotel or something and so we were I was down there getting some snacks I saw some books and I grabbed some and hers was in there and that was that was the beginning of a long satisfying love affair with Dorinda Jones's books, <laughs> but um, definitely check them out. Um, I will post a link below for the first one if you would like to read it. Um, but this book, my favorite book of 2020, it was A Bad Day for Sunshine. Okay. Prepare to be blown away. <laughs> Sheriff Sunshine Vikram finds her cup, of, her cup of joe more than half full when the small village of Del Sol, New Mexico, becomes the center of national attention for a kidnapper on the loose. Del Sol, New Mexico is known for three things. It's frying egg on the cement summers, strong cups of coffee, and now a nationwide manhunt? Del Sol native Sunshine Vikram has returned to town as the elected sheriff, thanks to her adorably meddlesome parents who nominated her, and she expects her biggest crime wave 
to involve an elderly flasher named Doug. But a teenage girl is missing, a kidnapper is on the loose, and all of this is reminding Sunshine why she left Del Sol in the first place. Add to that the trouble at her daughter's new school, plus and a plus and a kidnapped prized rooster named <laughs> Puff Daddy, and well the forecast looks anything but sunny. But even clouds have their silver linings. This one's got Levi, Sunshine's sexy, almost old flame, and a fiery hot U.S. Marshal. With temperatures rising everywhere, she turns. Del Sol's normally cool-minded sheriff is finding herself knee-deep in drama and danger. Can Sunshine face the call of duty and, and find the kidnapper who's terrorizing her beloved hometown without falling head over heels in love? Or worse? Okay. This book has everything that you could want in a book. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's not just well-written, and it is that. It's really well-written. I love Dorinda Jones' style, but it's got snark, it's got mystery, it has um, no sex, but it has a lot of tension. I mean, it has some very satisfying uh, start to what could possibly happen later. Um, and I love that it builds like that. I, I think sometimes, uh, you know, romance novels try to rush the relationship. And I, so I love how it, um, uh, how we get uh, more of a, an easing, some more tension. I think tension is really difficult to write correctly without being like, that's too slow of a burn. Do you know what I mean? But this is great. It was good. It has humor. It has some very emotional elements to it. And it has some paranormal, um, elements not a lot uh, not, not yet anyway not that I can tell <laughs> it has a girl who who predicted um, something in the future that came true and it has um, it has um, it has a past like a, a sunshine's past um, that will be slowly uncovered I believe as we go along and it's just it's fascinating to read. I don't, I did not have a single complaint in this book, uh, which is rare. I, I think I'm a little nitpicky at times, but I did not have a single complaint. And uh, what one of the things I really liked is the relationship between Sunshine, Sunny, and her daughter. Um, I have kids that same age, okay, and I feel like I feel like in a lot of books that are put out, the the parent-daughter or parent-child relationship is wrong, like way off. <laughs> I mean, maybe some parents are like that, or maybe some kids are like that, but a lot of times you find like the character is either, is either too perfect as a parent, or their kid is like acts way too old for their age, or their kid does... Um, or their, their kid is, uh, you know, they, their, their relationship is, is too perfect. Like, like everything is always perfect. And at the beginning of this, um, I think you kind of get the feeling like they, they have like the perfect mother daughter kind of life going on. But you, you realize after that it's not quite like that. And that, uh, there's some fragility there that, uh, they've been that they're working on and so I really like it the the past when it comes to her to uh, the father I think was really interesting and I'm really interested to learn more about what happens I don't want to give away too much but just know it's great it's just there's so much to look forward to in the next book which brings me to my next topic, which would be the books I am looking forward to the most in 2021. So this year I will reread um, A Bad Day for Sunshine because the second book, A Good Day for Chardonnay, um, comes out in the summer. It comes out in July. And so I am so looking forward to that. I've already pre-ordered it and I am just counting down until it gets here. I'm probably, it's during the summer, I'm probably going to send my husband and the kids off on a vacation so I can just stay home and read <laughs> and get that book devoured. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely recommend that. 
go check that one out. Um, it's called A Bad Day for Sunshine, Dorinda Jones. Link down in the description. You will not be sorry. If you like um, mystery, romance, and with a splash of paranormal, you will not be disappointed in this book. Okay, next. Uh, my, my January TBR. I, I took some recommendations and then I, I found some and I found a couple of others on my uh, Amazon suggestions that I'm looking forward to reading. So the first one is called A Very Friendly Valentine's Day. So like I'm sure a lot of others, I like to read um, books about holidays that are upcoming. So Christmas, I read a lot of Christmas stories um, for New Year's even. I like uh, you know, very, very themed reading months. And so as, as Valentine's Day comes, a friend of mine uh, recommended this one because uh, she knew that, that I like to read, you know, holiday stories around the holidays. So it's called A Very Friendly Valentine's Day. It's by Kaylee Loring. Kaylee Loring is one that I have read before. Um, I cannot remember, like, either loving or hating her books. Uh, I've read, I've read, I think, yeah, my history says that I have read many of hers. Um, I didn't review them. I'm not sure why. Usually if I'm really blown away by one or I really didn't like one, I, I leave a review immediately. Other ones I tend to let sit and marinate for a while before I decide how I'm going to rate it. So this one, not these ones though, I mean, I've read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've read seven of her books. Yeah, I've read seven, eight. I have read 18 of her books, nine. I've read nine of her, I've read nine of her books, not 18. I have read nine of her books and I don't, I have not left a review for any of them. So I'm not sure how I feel going into this one. Apparently it did not, and like the other ones I didn't hate, but I didn't love. And they, I, I must have just forgotten all about them. I never reviewed them. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but um, I, but she recommended it. So uh, I have to think that there must be something in there that she thinks I'm going to like. So we're going to give it a try. This one is supposed to be about, it's a best friends to lovers story. I tend to like those. Those are good. Um, and it's about, it looks like they are, Eddie and Bertie are going on a trip together via train. I'm not sure where they're going or why. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it works out. Um, it's gotten, it only has three ratings right now, but all three are five star. Let's check them out, shall we? Let's check out those rating, uh, those those reviews. Let's see. I was smiling and melting to mush through the entire book. I don't trust that one. <laughs> Sorry, I just don't. <laughs> um, roses are red, violets are blue. Read this book. I implore you to read this book, or I implore you to. Um, I don't think that I trust that one either. That looks like that looks like possibly one from a blog tour. And I don't think I've ever seen negative reviews from a blog tour. Um, we'll see. And then Perfect Holiday Treat. That one was just recent. Okay, here's some description of the book. Here we go. Longtime friends Bertie Beckett and Eddie Cavanvale have always had feelings for each other, some very hot and steamy feelings that have become anything but friendly. Neither one has acted on those feelings, fearful of jeopardizing their close relationship of six years. That is, until one drunken voicemail and a cross-country trip on the love train makes them face makes them face what has been simmering below the surface since the moment they met. An attraction and love so perfect that neither one can deny any longer. Eddie and Bertie are a couple you will just fall in love with. 
from their adorably sweet and flirty banter, humorous texts, and uh, feeling a little harder every page. Okay. This review is very, very gushing. Um, I don't know that I trust that one either. But I will tell you, I will tell you, in this trope, the best friends to lovers, I get really irritated when it's talking about how they both have loved each other, how they've always loved each other, and then just never did anything about it for years, never did anything about it, even though they, the feelings persisted. I'm like, get a backbone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, okay, if you are, if, if, but they, but they continue to have relationships with others. And I just don't get it. I mean, if they really do, if they're really that into each other for years and never do anything about it, probably best that they don't. I mean, yes, yeah, what I'm saying. It's, I think it's overdone. I think it's kind of a lame excuse to, to say, oh, I love, I, we love each other, but we're not going to do anything because we're afraid we'll lose our friendship. But I don't know. I think it's a cop out. I think it's a cop out. I mean, that's just me. I'll still read it. <laughs> I just wish it was a different version of the trope, if you know what I mean. Let's see. Anything? Yeah, all all of these reviews look like they're from blogs that were probably part of a, a blog tour. Because they're all from the same time, the 12th and 13th of January, 12th, 13th January. Yeah, I'm going to say these are probably not trustworthy. It wasn't even published until January 15th. So, <laughs> how those ones got on there, it means they got an advanced review copy um, and they were paid as part of a blog tour <laughs> to provide reviews. That's what I'm thinking. So I can't say that I have high expectations, but I do like the trope and I must not have hated her writing before I would have said it in a review. So we're going to give it a try. And then if I don't like it, I'm going to razz on my friend that recommended it. So <laughs> I'll let you know how that one comes out. Okay. Next one. The next one I came across, um, Okay, here's how this one happened. I was checking it out, like it came across my suggestions. So I tapped it, you know, and I meant to just read the description. And I accidentally hit the button that said, buy all of the books in the series. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon, for that. <laughs> and I happen to have the one click buy. <laughs> so I have now all the books in this series. There are four. Um, and it's called the, the Samantha True Mysteries. So I'm going to give it a shot. The Samantha True Mysteries are about, it looks like she is a PI. I like PI stories. Um, let's see, do your job and move along already. Trouble is, I'm in too deep to do either. Okay, that's a good, it's a good start. A year in Samantha True's forensic photography classes, she knows three things. One, crime scenes are messy. Two, especially when you throw up on them. And three, she may not be cut out for this. When the police drag her to an investigation, she's just as baffled by the scene. With clues like superhero masks, disco balls, and Bigfoot, are they ever going to find who did it? As she digs deeper into the photographic evidence, she realizes her small town is full of secrets, and she might be happier staying in the dark. A laugh-out-loud mystery that will keep you guessing and quickly turning the pages. One Hit Wonder offers, just, offers the just-right reader escape, but fair warning, this book leaves readers wanting more. Warning may cause spontaneous laughter. This mystery offers witty banter, characters you'll want to be friends with, and is a perfect escape to the, nor to the Pacific Northwest. Laughing out loud in public may cause curious glances from strangers. 
right. That sounds good. Hey, I like laugh out loud funny. Let's see how we do on the reviews. We have, oh, we have mixed reviews. I love the ones with mixed reviews. <laughs> I don't know why. I like to read the bad reviews. Um, I feel they're they're more honest, and that's not always the case. A lot, of, or or sometimes they'll have bad reviews that'll be like, I didn't like it because I don't like it when they use these bad words, or I didn't like it because it was too slow of a burn, things like that. So I'm like, okay, but if I don't mind slow burn and I had no problem with reading the language, then I feel safe checking this book out. Whereas you get the ones that have all five star reviews, but they're all like these long gushing ones that you can tell somebody, you know, it was part of a blog tour. That's what you can tell. And I don't trust those reviews. <laughs> I do not recommend this book. First, it is 127 pages. I did not like the characters. There were a lot of, I can't believe people I've known my whole life could do bad things. It was a waste of time and money. Two stars. Okay. So here's a five star. It says, and it's a verified purchase. Good book. Love the characters and storyline. Can't wait to read the next one. Don't pass this one up. Good read. Almost four stars, but not quite. So that one, this one got a three star. Okay. Short story, not a novel. Okay. Great characters. Good story. Interesting main character. Good mystery. Well written. Okay. So I'm going to read all four of those books <laughs> on my TBR because I have them and you know I, I probably would have checked out the first one. It's, it's actually, it's even in Kindle Unlimited. I definitely would have read the first one regardless of whether I'd accidentally bought it or not. But now I'm going to read all four and let you know how it goes. <laughs> so Samantha True Mystery by, by what's your name? Christy Rose. Looks cute. Okay. The next one I'm actually very excited about. Um, I had pre-ordered this one, so I'm excited to have it. It's called Falling for Your Boss. It is a sweet romantic comedy from the Love Clichés rom-com series. Now, the reason I am so excited about this one is just like with A Bad Day for Sunshine, I read the first book in this one, and it was called Falling for Your Best, for Best Friend's Twin or something, and it was actually really good. I don't usually like the sweet romances because I feel like they they don't do the the male character justice. Like they make the male character sound more like a like a chick, you know. What do they call it? CWD. That's what it is. If you don't know what it is, ask me in the comments. I'll let you know. But um yeah, I um, I really enjoyed it, and it is on my, my list of ones to review for you. So I'm going to read this one this month, and then maybe I'll review them together. Um, it was really good. So Emma St. Clair wrote, Falling for Your Boss. Uh, so I'll give it a try. I'm not usually into the trope of the, you know, of loving the boss, probably because I've, I've had bosses that I've just been... I <laughs> I had a boss when I was in college who was much older than me and hit on me a few times and it was it was kind of kind of icky I'll be honest like he told me my skirt was so short it distracted him even though my skirt was down to my knee <laughs> and uh, and he wasn't saying it like I need to go change he was saying it like it was supposed to be a compliment uh, and he kept trying to get me to come over to watch, uh, like football with him in his living room on a TV with just the two of us. And I was, no, no, no. Uh -uh. So the whole, you know, boss and employee trope, not usually one of my favorites, but, but, um, I, I really liked the first one in this in this series, so I'm going to give this one a shot. I'm actually looking forward to it. So, Falling for Your Boss by Emma St. Clair. I'll let you know how that one goes, too. And then, this, this is a series I've already started. I've read the first two, and I have the third one on my in my queue to be read right now. 
And it is also in Kindle Unlimited, so if you want to check these out, um, it, it would be free. So it's the Hollywoods, not Hollywood, but Holly da space Woods files. And uh, it's by Emma Hart. Now, if you've seen one of my other reviews um, from Emma Hart's books, you know that I, I tend to enjoy her books. So I am definitely going to try this one out. This one is about a PI. Um, and the rest of her family are police officers, I believe, including the love interest. Um, so I have really enjoyed this one is set in Texas and they are very Texan. <laughs> they love their guns and their, uh, their little phrases, like not just the bless your heart or, or, or you know, things like that, but this, I, mean, <laughs> I can't even remember some of them, they're kind of complicated for me, <laughs> but they were really good. Um, the I only had two complaints about the first two. One is that uh, I think the you know what <laughs> I don't know if I should even try anymore. The, in the first one, I did not enjoy the uh, the love interest. I think that he was a jerk, and I don't see why she liked him. Well, she didn't like him. <laughs> but uh, the second book, they they got along better, so <laughs> that was nice. But um, I definitely like the first two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try the next ones. I'm going to finish this series. How many are there? Let me see. Oh, this one also has mixed reviews. Woo! Now, see, that just goes to show you. This is one that I've already read. Twisted Bond is the first one. And I have already read it. And I haven't rated it yet because I just read it a couple days ago. And I haven't written my review. But um, it got... It's got some one, two, and three star reviews, some fours and some fives. Um, but yeah, see, this one is a one star review and it says, well, I finished, but literally I scammed a lot. So, you know, I read the negative reviews, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna buy the book. So I actually really like this. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it stays good. I'm hoping it stays good. So fingers crossed for Hollywood's um, for the Hollywood series and Emma Hart. So that's it. That's my January. Um, I, I really, I really hope that you check out my favorite book from 2020 and let me know how it is. I am going to do a review on that one. I'm excited to do a review on that one. I'm going to reread it, um, just for fun. I was going to anyway, but, um, yeah. And then when a bad day for a good day for Chardonnay comes out, we can be reading buddies. <laughs> so, so that's all I have for today. Uh, I, I hope you liked the video. Hit the subscribe, hit the, give me a like, and then uh, go back and read. I'll see you next time. All right, bye.